Hey everyone, today we are looking into Marie Laveau II, the daughter and namesake of Marie Laveau, a famous voodoo priestess who operated out of New Orleans during the 19th century. Marie Jr. is said to have adopted her mother's profession, but her life is shrouded in myth. Here we look at her background and will attempt to separate fact from fiction. Marie Laveau II, or Jr., was born as Marie Philomena Laveau Glapion on the 27th of February 1827 in the city of New Orleans in Louisiana. Her mother was Marie Laveau and her father was Jean Louis Christophe Dumini de Glapion. Marie was born into a town which stood on the frontier between societies and cultures. New Orleans had been the capital of the massive expanse of territory along the Mississippi River and north towards the Great Lakes and the Dakotas, which the French had claimed and partially colonized in the 18th century. The town of New Orleans was the capital of this vast colony of Louisiana. However, in 1803, the French ruler Napoleon elected to sell the vast Louisiana territory to the government of the United States. Louisiana was subsequently given statehood status in 1812 and the city of New Orleans began to expand into a major commercial center in the Gulf of Mexico. Where it had a population of just approximately 8,000 people in 1803, this swelled to over 100,000 people by 1850. Thus, the city Marie was born into in 1827 was undergoing profound change. Marie's life was shaped by that changing environment. In the first quarter of the 19th century, just before Marie's birth, a huge influx of settlers from the Caribbean, fleeing wars on the island of Hispaniola and elsewhere, arrived to Louisiana, bringing with them the voodoo religion, a series of native religious practices or folk religions which had in turn been brought to the Caribbean from Western Africa. Marie Laveau II's fame lies in her continuation of the voodoo tradition in Louisiana and in New Orleans during the second half of the 19th century. But before looking at her life, it is necessary to examine the life and career of her mother, for it was from Marie Laveau I that her daughter inherited her role as a voodoo priestess in 19th century New Orleans. Indeed, the pair's lives are inextricably entangled, as we shall see. Marie's mother was born in 1801, as a free woman of colour in the town of New Orleans in Louisiana, in what was still a French colony at the time. She is said to have been born to an African woman named Marguerite d'Arcantel, and to a Frenchman, Charles Laveau. Marie first married a Creole man from Haiti named Jacques Paris, but he subsequently disappeared and she then started a relationship with Jean-Louis Christophe Dumini de Glapion. The couple had several children, including Marie, though several of them fell victim to the regular yellow fever outbreaks that plagued New Orleans due to the city's poor drainage system. Originally, Laveau became a hairdresser to help support their household. It was in the course of this work and her interactions with several black clients that she evidently became acquainted with the workings of voodoo as a religious system, as it had been passed down from the Dahomey Kingdom in what is now Benin, in Western Africa. She was soon being sought out by some of New Orleans' more affluent citizens as somebody who could use her knowledge of voodoo to ward off evil spirits and aid them in their troubles. Voodoo in New Orleans consisted of rituals around root work. People would seek out priests or priestesses who could act as conjurers for spiritual intervention or protection of them in their daily affairs. These favors could do almost anything, having the power to impact on personal relationships and also political influence. It is generally understood that most protagonists of voodoo such as Laveau used their supposed powers in a benevolent fashion, but there was also a more malicious side to the religion, one which Marie Laveau II would later become associated with. Laveau Sr. was aided in her study by the tutelage of Dr. John Bayou, a well-known Senegalese root worker. Before long, she dominated the practice of voodoo in New Orleans 
as Queen of the Voodoos. She made a good living by offering advice, conducting root rituals, performing and selling Grigri amulets or other objects which were said to ward off bad spirits and protect the wearer. As Queen of the Voodoos, Laval worked out of three main sites. Her home on St. Anne Street, Lake Pontchartrain, the large lake bordering the northern side of the city, and Congo Square, an open space in the Dreme neighborhood in the historic center of New Orleans. She would conduct rituals at home and provide advice to clients, while at Congo Square, she would perform on Sundays in front of crowds and more elaborate rituals would take place on the shores of the lake. In the later years of her life, as Voodoo lost many of its followers in New Orleans and the city authorities began to crack down on it, Laval was forced to move her practices across the river to the part of New Orleans known as Algiers. This was the first point of disembarkation for African arrivals to New Orleans and the traditional birthplace of voodoo in the city. Thus, by the time that Marie Laval died in 1881, the culture of voodoo was experiencing major problems in New Orleans. As it did, voodoo began taking on new forms and was gradually incorporated into other religions. This was the environment in which Marie Laval II attempted to succeed her mother as a senior protagonist of voodoo in New Orleans. As we have seen, Marie Laval II was born in 1827. Little was known about her childhood, other than that, it was stalked by the loss of many of her siblings to the yellow fever disease, and that she would have been familiar with her mother's practice of voodoo from the visits of clients to the house on St. Anne Street. Marie eventually set out to follow in her mother's footsteps, but it is unclear if she chose to do this or if her mother chose the role for her daughter. Some reports claim that Marie was unusually similar in appearance to her mother, but this may well have been an invention in light of her becoming the spiritual successor to the Queen of the Voodoos. Some even later claimed that the younger Marie was actually the older woman reincarnated in a more youthful form. According to the fable, the older Marie used a potion to suck the youth out of children in New Orleans so that she could remain young forever. This sounds rather far-fetched, but there is documentary evidence that individuals at the time believed that Marie Jr. was actually Marie Sr. and that she had used these potions and her voodoo rituals to consume the souls of her fellow New Orleanians. Marie II, who appears to have been a shrewd enough businesswoman, did not try to dispel these rumours in belief that they would facilitate her work, but there is a wider significance to the rumour. As voodoo became a more obscure religious ritual, practiced by small numbers of people in New Orleans in the second half of the 19th century, it was increasingly demonised by wider society and deemed to be associated with a type of black magic. This is an association which persists in the popular imagination down to the present day, and the tale of Marie Senior sucking the souls out of her fellow citizens in New Orleans is simply an early manifestation of this. Marie Junior's life is symptomatic of the manner in which voodoo rituals and practices were increasingly vilified in Louisiana. She is said to have embraced the darker side of the religion, throwing wild and debauched feasts in various locations in the city, such as at the Bayou St. John on Lake Pontchartrain, and at a voodoo house which became associated with her on the city's famous Bourbon Street. All of this was in keeping with the general decline in the number of practitioners of voodoo in New Orleans in the second half of the 19th century, and a general effort by the city authorities and so-called polite society to eradicate the folk religion by depicting it as immoral and even wicked. A report by the Daily Picayune newspaper in 1873 stated that there were just about 300 dedicated adherents to Louisiana voodoo left in New Orleans. The practice had been firmly reduced in the course of the 19th century as new Protestant arrivals from the East Coast considered voodoo to be a threat to the public safety of New Orleans and the morality of its inhabitants. Thus, 
As the railways spread across the United States in the 1870s and 1880s, spreading the views of the East Coast Americans all over the country, the room for more traditional Creole and African cultural pursuits such as voodoo became ever more restricted. Much of the revelry associated with Marie Junior's rituals was centered on the festival of St. John on the 24th of June. A famous instance in 1872 is said to have involved elements of an orgy, a bubbling cauldron full of strange ingredients and much alcohol being consumed. Marie Junior is said to have been central to this ritual, though her mother was still alive, albeit by that time quite elderly. Again, it is very difficult to tell if this is an actual accurate depiction of a voodoo ceremony held in New Orleans at the time, or a sensationalized version of events which sought to vilify the supposed immorality of this folk religion. Marie took over entirely from her mother following her death in 1881, but Marie Junior's career was limited thereafter. We find little reference to her in the 1880s as interest in Marie II withered away following the death of the more infamous Queen of the Voodoos. She is believed to have drowned in a storm on Lake Pontchartrain at some point in the 1890s, when she would have been nearing her 70th year, though rumours abounded decades later that she had been seen alive as late as 1918. It is unclear if she married or had any children, and unlike her mother, whose tomb in St. Louis Cemetery has become a popular tourist attraction down to this day in New Orleans. It is unclear where Marie Junior is even buried. Ultimately, the life of Marie Laveau II or Junior, while shrouded in myth, is symptomatic of the process whereby the enthusiasm for old ritualistic religions and spiritualism of the kind which had allowed Louisiana voodoo to flourish in New Orleans in her mother's day died out across the South and in states such as Louisiana in the second half of the 19th century. As the railroads opened up the country in the first age of globalization, such practices were snuffed out in favor of the more uniform practice of Christianity across Louisiana, and the fate of the Lavaux reflects these changes. Her mother was a major figure in the life of the city of New Orleans, but by the end of the century, Marie Laval II died largely in obscurity as Louisiana voodoo lost the vigor and popularity which it had enjoyed in New Orleans during the first half of the 19th century. Thank you so much for watching this video on Marie Laval II, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like and a comment down below and if you're new, why not subscribe? If you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them down in the comments or you can find links to my email and Instagram in the description. I hope you have notifications turned on so you get all my videos as soon as I upload them. And anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.